Bill Gates said, I will always choose a lazy person to do a difficult job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. What's a real life example of this? I was working as a stock boy in a supermarket, and when we had to fill the milk cooler, people would bust open a 12 pack of milk cartons and put them in one by one. On my first day, I just placed the 12 pack in the cooler and cut the plastic off on one side with my box cutter and yanked it from under it and the look of the store manager and the other employee who was training me was pure bewilderment. From that day, everyone did it my way. Tart of lockdown, my nine-year-old son was having worksheets emailed to complete at home. One day, left him at the laptop doing his maths while I made some dinner with my three-year-old daughter. Walked into the living room with his dinner to find him asking the Alexa all of his maths questions. Orked as a laborer at a nursery one summer. Daily tasks included manually watering 15,000 plants each day. Put together a back of the napkin plan to build an irrigation system and spent the next few weeks building it with some money from the boss. That system is still running 15 years later and does all the work now. I did automate myself out of the job and had to find another eventually. A couple years later, got my engineering degree. I'm convinced engineers are inherently lazy people that will spend a disproportionate effort to make things easier. My brother-in-law spent a whole summer trying to figure out how to fix his sagging deck at the lake which he could in theory crawl under and jack it up. It would have been a tunneling project. It's a 660 area, all long tube six boards. Massive. I sat there long enough with enough beers in me to come up with the idea of just cutting a square out of the sagging area about 3 to x3, jacking it up then re-screwing down the boards. He paints the thing every spring with a roller anyhow so it's not like the square cut shows up. He thought I was a genius. I was just lazy. He had to hold a thermometer in water in chemistry class. It probably was only 20 minute experiment, but your arms get tired after a couple minutes and you can't let the thermometer touch the bottom of the pan or it won't get an accurate reading. So instead of sucking it up and just holding the thermometer, my lab partner built a contraption out of lab books and paper clips to somehow hold the thermometer in the water without it touching bottom. It was the stupidest looking thing you would ever see in a lab class, and our professor even walked over and said if it looks stupid, sounds stupid, but it works, then it isn't stupid. Had a math teacher that actively encouraged his students to be as lazy as possible defining lazy as actively searching for ways to do as minimal work as possible. His logic was that, the way math is now, it could always be simplified and still work the same. Someone just needs to be lazy enough to find that. Was a paid intern at a large company during one summer back home from college. My work 95% consisted of using SAP, import to Excel, clean data and generate reports occasionally create some tool someone needed. In the first two weeks after getting a hang of my responsibilities, writing all the Excel formulas needed, and basically automating 99% of my work, I was chilling. I went from actually working from 9 minutes 5 to maybe 1 hour tops a day. Finding, importing, cleaning, and reporting usually took hours, but with all the formulas it took two minutes of clicking. I then helped the other cool intern get his shit set up so we could both just chill. We could take two hour lunches paid for by the company and nobody said anything cause we were just getting so much more done than the other interns. Off guy helped for special tasks when asked but those were simple 20 minute tasks building something in Excel. Overall, was the easiest slash stress less internship of my life. The clerk was asked to bring 145 white papers into the office. He doesn't want to count the papers manually, so he printed 145 blank sheets and took them in. Me of my favorite examples is Andy Kim. And I'd like to preface this by saying that I don't think Kim is lazy so much as a genius. Andrew Wacom was a singer slash songwriter who became famous under the stage name Andy Kim. He achieved success writing songs for bands like the Archies, 
possibly most notably Sugar Sugar. After his success, he coasted for a while until his record label dropped him for lack of output. At that point, he created his own label and cranked out hits like Rock Me Gently. When they saw this, the big record labels then bought his label under the assumption that they would then profit off of the songs he wrote and performed. He then very shortly stopped writing songs and largely lived off the sale of his label. Work smarter, not harder. It took me like three months, but I automated a data pipeline to extract data, clean it up, and spit it out in an Excel or PDF format to one of our clients. I walked over to shoot the shit with the lady who handles my client and gives me tasks, and she told me we make Fortic off them every month for that automated job. Fuck, I need to go start my own business. Hen Carl Friedrich Gauss, the famous German mathematician and physicist, was in elementary school around 1784. His class was assigned the busy work task of adding all the numbers from 1 to 100, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and so on. This usually kept the class quiet for half an hour or so. Seven-year-old Carl was sitting quietly with the correct answer 5,050, while the rest of the class was just starting, so the surprised teacher asked him how he came up with the solution. He replied that he added 1 and 100 and got 101, then he added 2 and 99 and got 101, 3 plus 98 equals 101, and so on. He realized there was a pattern of 50 pairs of numbers with each pair adding up to 101. And 50x101 equals 5050. When I was in college, I had a job at an Italian fast food place with a reputation for its breadsticks. They came in frozen and needed a bit to thaw, so we'd take a giant Threekspur aluminum baking sheet, spread them out in a single layer with no spaces, and cover it with a plastic bag, then leave it sit in the walk in overnight. The next day, yeah, I'd have to get a pair of tongs and move each stick to a new tray, turning them over, then cover the new tray with the bag, and let them sit on racks for a couple of hours before brushing on the garlic butter sauce. This was tedious enough that yeah, I'd usually be ready to brush the butter on the first tray as soon as you turned the last tray. I was given this task for the first time one morning and just did not want to deal with it. I realized if I put the second tray upside down on top of the first one, then turned it over and took the first tray out, I got exactly the same results. Blew the boss mind when I did the three-hour job in about 15 minutes. I was given a zero. Five slash hour raise. Was once set to test a certain piece of equipment on a ship. The test involved attaching the unit to a reader, then run loads of command line commands. Then, one would have to make a copy of all the text, copy it into Word, and save it as a real crappy-looking report. There was hundreds of units, and they needed to be tested several times a year. We did about 20 minutes 30 a day. It would take several weeks to finish. I didn't know coding at the time, but always wanted to learn it. Within two months, I had made a program even with a GUI to spot faults with ease instead of having to actually read the reports. The program could read three units at a time and would automatically create a smooth PDF report and save it on our server, named with serial number and date. The job was now to attach three units, then wait for about three minutes, detach and attach new ones. Basically 30 seconds work, three minutes break. I could now test all units in a day though I would typically spread it out over a couple more days. When I left the company, I left the program on the test computer. I got an email from an ex-colleague a few months later saying they were using the program on several ships now. There wasn't any manual for the program, of course, but it was so straightforward that it was needed. If I need directions in not asking a man with one tooth, I'm asking a man with one leg, because he definitely knows the easiest way to get there. Yup, if there's a shortcut that one-legged fucker knows where it is. You won't be hopping fences neither. Plug clocks in at midnight so they are already set. Eating dinner out of the pot so there's fewer dishes to wash.
is to wash 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 an older company had a person dedicated to data entry which boiled down to copying and pasting portions of data from text files into spreadsheet and formatting into a report. The person originally doing this job spent a full 40 plus hours slash week doing it, but was not very computer literate. When they retired, the company hired someone with actual skills. The new hire convinced management to let her work remotely after getting up to speed on the job. The first week at home was spent automating the entire job. The remainder of their multi-year tenure with the company was spent doing whatever they wanted save the 10 minutes, 15 minutes weekly to run their program and to answer the odd email here and there, all while getting paid full salary and benefits. They actually had to add in a few errors now and then to make it seem realistic. Worked in a local adult education center. One of my main tasks was to make calculation about how many people enlisted for a course, how many of them got discounts on employees, e, g, e, how many men slash women slash age, etc., that was needed to calculate upcoming courses, fees, etc. That was my only work there, and I hated it. This was in early 90s, so PC were a thing in our offices but I had no idea how to write a program or use a database to use this information. Lucky as I am, our center had an interesting policy. When you want to educate yourself, you can attend that class for free. And when it's during the work time, then this is work time as long as my supervisor is okay with that. She was. So I spent three months studying database structures, scripting, coding, etc. I told my tutor what I want to do, and he helped me to write a script that grabs all necessary information from the course's database, copy that into another database, and then I went crazy and wrote code that was insane. I implemented what-if scenarios thanks to filters. At the end, I was able to do my work that needed sixes a day within 15 minutes. I mean before that it took E. G. E an hour to have all the necessary informations to have a how many unemployed single parent women does it need to make the costs of that course even. I had everything back then. Now you want statistics how many single parent disabled foreign women at the age of 80 minus 90 are needed for the next two years to keep the ornithology course running. Sure, no problem. Clickety click, done. After that, I started the PC in the morning grabbed all the data, ran my script, was done within 15 minutes, and then read the book I brought from home. At the end of the day, I gave my supervisor several dozens of papers, statistics, predictions, etc., and said that was a lot of work, and went home. My supervisor was super happy with me because I did so much more now and was super effective. Worked goods in for an aircraft manufacturer as a summer job at university. Parts would arrive, would open them, and key in all the details into a terminal. That bit was long-winded. I discovered the terminal keyboard has assignable shortcuts and set up a bunch of them for all the boilerplate such that keying in an item was about six keystrokes. Saved myself and my work made hours every day, which we would spend pranking each other, other warehouse staff and staff at other sites. Had a manager in my 20s who detested the fact I turned a two-hour process into a 15-minute process. It exposed how much lazier he was compared to me, because when the higher-ups learned from other people at my level that I created the program, they took me aside and told me he took credit for it. They asked me how I felt about that. I told them what decisions they make regarding the manager's character is their decision. Just put yourselves in my shoes and consider it from that angle. They did nothing and I took the concept to a competitor who invested the money into making the program more robust and proprietary. My name was line one on the patent and trademark documents and I did well enough to semi-retire at 45. I credit Lee Iacocca for the inspiration. He went through a similar problem with higher upset Ford and his answer 
was to take his brain to Chrysler, who would value it. Back in high school, a lot of kids used to walk through his park to get home slash to school. A portion of the path went into the woods because it was just quicker than walking the actual trail. At one point in the walk through the woods, you had to go up this small but tedious hill. Nothing major, but it took like 10 seconds of hard work to go up it. You couldn't go around because one side was a small cliff to the creek below, and other side had dense trees. One summer, a bunch of us got together and decided to just dig through that hill to make it flat. It took like 14 of us three good days to get through it. It was a hard three days, but it was definitely worth it. Saved 10 seconds of hill climbing every morning and afternoon, 150 plus days of the year. And it wasn't just us, but hundreds of other kids who took the same party every day. Sometimes you need to put in a lot of work so your future selves can enjoy the easy way out. Was invited to my friend's yearly apple picking. It was a full day of apples and kids in filling a truck for cider. I'm lazy and suggested we make the process more efficient with tarps on the ground. We managed in two hours what historically took all day. We didn't even get to the picnic lunch. Alky talkies. In every job I've ever had these things make your day far less labor intensive if used correctly. Hopefully this has been posted yet HTTPS slash slash the daily com slash articles slash it have been robo thtps slash slash the daily an australia explorers discovered a mountain that was taller than empty kosciusko which was though to be the tallest mountain in australia rather than cause confusion by telling everyone a new tallest mountain had been found they simply named the new mountain empty kosciusko and renamed the original to something else. Sounds like Hanlon's razor. HTTPS slash slash FS. Blog slash 2017 slash 4 slash mental model Hanlon's razor slash HTTPS slash slash FS. Blog slash 2017 slash 4 slash mental model Hanlon's razor slash the German general Kurt von Hammerstein Eckwards slash slash N. Wikipedia, org slash wiki slash Kurt von Hammerstein Accord used Hanlon's razor to assess his men. There are clever, diligent, stupid, and lazy officers. Usually two characteristics are combined. Some are clever and diligent, their place is the general staff. The next lot are stupid and lazy, they make up 90% of every army and are suited to routine duties. Anyone who is both clever and lazy is qualified for the highest leadership duties because he possesses the intellectual clarity and the composure necessary for difficult decisions. One must beware of anyone who is stupid and diligent. He must not be entrusted with any responsibility because he will always cause only mischief. Knew a guy who had a low-level data slash reporting job. He had several daily slash weekly work responsibilities including a bunch of reports that needed quite a bit of tweaking from raw data to finished product. But, like I said, low level. We didn't find out until way later, but he had set up macros for each of his major responsibilities where he could. Once set up, he had just run the macros to do his work, but then had smartly hold off on delivering the reports until just a little before the deadlines. Head hit every assignment and was seen as reliable. He also would complain about the workload so people would leave him with that work. I doubt he did a full hour of work a day after he set up what he did. Eventually, he left the job for one with better pay. But damn did he work lazy. Also, he was smart not to reveal until the end because had he told them about it, he would have gotten a pat on the back and would have been given a whole other workload on top of maintaining those macros slash etc. Dude milk to the job not the other way around. Any of my favorite stories from my youth was the tale of the man who was too lazy to fail. Wikipedia, org slash wiki slash time enough for love hash percent 22, the tale of the man who was too lazy to fail percent 22. I got fed up with handwriting itemized sub orders at work, so I set up a spreadsheet that you can just fill out. Then, 
I got tired of having more than one program open and not being able to search within and among those ordered sheets at least not automatically or easily. So in having our FileMaker guide integrated into our greater ordering and invoicing system, I was frustrated at the pointlessness of sorting a giant pile of paper invoices from an unpaid stack to a paid stack every month, so I just use the accounting software to keep track. I became asterisk so irritated asterisk with having to fill out a multi-page printed spreadsheet for every single order, sometimes just one item, two pages in and frequently. There would be those pesky itemized suborders that I condensed the items into most used, put them all on one easy-to-read sheet, and encouraged my co-worker to simply write out the more. Basically, I hate busy work, and paper invariably leads to busy work. I have tried to reduce the use of paper in our office, but have not been entirely successful. We have to have written order forms available, because sometimes... The orders are coming in too fast to be able to type it all quickly and correctly and have to keep some paper records for things like organic FDA and USDA audits but all in all I'd say my absolute hatred of filing has reduced busy work here by at least half. E. I automate shit all the time at work to make daily routine jobs more easy. I write manuals with screenshots with arrows indicating where to click or where to fill in what. Whenever I write a manual, I assume that whoever reads it is a complete idiot so that whenever customers call for the same questions again, I just send them to the online manual I created. No need to type it out again by email or explain it again by phone. O's Alexander and the Gordian Knot Count A complex knot that, according to prophecy, was to be undone only by the person who was to rule Asia, and that was cut, rather than untied, by Alexander the Great. Why boss put my name in for leading a project group shortly after I joined the company. I had no experience whatsoever about project managing it. He still demanded that I lead the group of 12 people. Always smarter guys, tech background, and shit. These guys are like magicians for me, and with way more time at the company. I'm a business guy who's too dumb for balance sheets, that's why I'm in HR and because I quite like the field the most. So we started the first meeting. I asked for everyone's plan, experience, and ideas, gathered the different pros and cons, cross-checked with the budget we had, put on a time frame with milestones to reach around six months, put in valuable people to consult at different steps. Why did I do that? Because I like organizing stuff and keep everyone on the same page and delegate to DOS. Got promoted because of the success of the project. I asked my boss why he put me in for it since I never done anything like that. He said because I complained in the first week that most of the work has way too wonky structure. No clear guideline and this could be improved heavily if we just take some time into it. And because I hated talking to others if I had questions. And I wouldn't get a clear answer like, ask 10 people the same question, and you get 15 different answers. In the long run, this would make us way more efficient, and keeps everyone on the same page. All because I hated disorganized work. Years ago, as a student, I got a job stocking shelves. Guys were carrying the heavy boxes, put them on the floor, and bend each time to pick up the items to put on the shelves. I was maybe a light 100 pounds woman, and carrying the boxes was just killing me physically. So one day, I had an idea. I put the box on an old desk chair and rolled it around. No more carrying and no more bending. Funny thing is that, instead of doing the same thing, most of the guys called me lazy and kept carrying the heavy boxes, just to prove how strong they were. Now they have special rolling carts to do the job. The entire miscellaneous kitchen tools section at bed, bath, and beyond. I don't need an avocado slicer or a lemon squeezer or an automatic chopper slash dicer, but lazy old me definitely puts them to good use. This is a case of ask a lazy person for a solution to handling their work. I got sent out to California on a fact-binding mission about the marijuana growing industry years ago 
to see if there was a market for the sort of a and see work we do automation and controls. I set up meetings with some of the local growers and met with them, discussed their outdoor grow operations. Their biggest complaint was having to go to the grow sites to do various tasks associated with maintaining the crop. I asked them if we could provide a system that could allow you to manage those operations remotely from home, would you be interested in buying it? Every single guy was like, fuck yeah, if I can do it from bed while smoking a spliff ID be totally on board for that, that's like my dream come true. So it turns out some of the automation that was developed for that industry was marketed to the inherent laziness of stoners who have an entrepreneurial spirit. My brother gave my oldest nephew $10 a week if he did all his chores without needing to be told or complaining. One day, he gets home early from work and sees the neighbor kid tossing a bag in the trash. He asks him what he is doing and the kid says he gets five bucks a week to take care of a few chores. My nephew outsourced his chores. L.I. worked in a graphics design studio as an intern. They mostly had me practice and do some basic stuff their head designers was too busy to do. One was a real estate ad. It had a few basic templates, but it was all kinds of scatterbrained. I would spend five minutes, ten minutes trying to find the right layer for all the pictures and had to mess with way too much. So I made copies of the files and made one for each template. I labeled everything made it so the images on top of each other wouldn't clip into the lower ones like the previous did. So on. You could be in and out of the template in two minutes, three minutes. Showed my boss the difference, and he had this face of well shit. He said the next day that if I was a graduate, he'd hire me, because I was better than the people sending applications in. In short, I made an overly complicated slash unorganized thing the opposite. And my boss was actually said he couldn't hire me. Had to carry groceries into the house when I was a kid. I didn't want to make multiple trips, so I tied several bags to the belt loops on my pants to do it in one trip. Few years back, my sister was doing some hardware testing and validation. She was working with a bunch of Excel tables. When she found out that I was doing some automatic Excelis creating slash editing for my job, she had me create a script for her job. Two minutes, three days of eye-killing boring work done in 20 seconds. She kept it a secret for a while. The worst task became the best task. She eventually shared it with the company, as there were many others that did a similar job. And then she got promoted. See, according to Facebook parents, the fucker that carved a sphere out of a stone block and rolled it instead of pushing it like the other dudes.